You're welcome back. Uh, we're glad to know you're still there. It's breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. And uh, right now we're going to look at the challenges and reality of in vitro fertilization or what is simply known as IVF. And we're glad to be joined by Dr. Jean Nassar, fertility specialist. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, infertility is a problem in our society, especially a society that uh, takes uh, um, having babies, having procreation very seriously. It has ruined marriages and so many other things. But not many people know about this IVF, intro vitro, in vitro fertilization. So walk us through what that really means and how so, couples can get it. Yeah. Okay, so let me start just by the definition of infertility, just for people know where to go and seek help or to see a specialist maybe. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, thing is definition of fertility. So if you have more than one year of regular unprotected intercourse and you don't have a baby, please go and see a specialist in in vitro fertilization. So that's the definition of IVF. Okay. okay. So uh, in vitro fertilization is a procedure that is very simple. It's not complicated. It takes about uh, maybe 10 days on average. It depends on uh, the patient, but it takes about around 10 days. During these 10 days, the patient will uh, have to do some uh, subcutaneous injection just under the skin. It's like insulin injection. It's very easy to do. And during these 10 days, she will come to our clinic to uh, do an ultrasound, a monitoring to see how she's responding to the injections. And accordingly, according to the size of those follicles and the number of follicles, we will decide on what day we should give her a trigger shot so that she can ovulate 36 hours later. And under light anesthesia or even under local anesthesia, we can get those eggs from her do the fertilization in our lab, then we'll have some embryo. Some will be uh, freezed and some embryo will be transferred to the uterus of the patient uh, day two slash day three or day five slash day six after the retrieval of the eggs. Okay. So that's it. It results in a pregnancy and that it you results in pregnancy. have. Yes. Okay, sure. so which means with IVF, there's nothing like infertility in a woman? I mean, it's not 100% the pregnancy rate, but it depends on the age of the patient and uh, on her ovarian reserve. So there are many factors that can affect the pregnancy after IVF. So if we are talking about just one IVF cycle, it will be around 50 to 70% pregnancy rate depending on the age and the case of the patient. No, but you have you are prime age, um, you're below 30, for instance, and you, you're trying to, get, to yes. have a baby. There's a likelihood more than 70% that More than 70% to, to have this baby, yes, sure. Okay, but this is only for the woman, right? Yes. So we're not talking about the man right now. And we're not talking about the man, but also we should talk about the man because sometimes we are obliged to do in vitro fertilization for the sole cause male factor, and which is around 20%. So 20% of the infertility is due to male factor, and around 40% it's a cofactor. So the male is very important because depending on the sperm count, so if the sperm count is very low, Sometimes, and the woman is perfect, sometimes we are obliged to go and to do in vitro fertilization because of the male. So because we have a low number or bad quality sperm, and by IVF, I didn't explain to you, by doing the IVF, there is a procedure called ICSI, which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection, where we go, we find the perfect sperm, we get it, and we inject it inside the egg. So if you have a low number or a bad quality sperm, we go and check for the best one and we inject it. So yes, main factor is one factor of infertility and to be considered seriously. Okay, uh, well, uh, it's good to know that it's not just for the woman. So there is no uh, fight in that, that okay, the woman has this advantage over the man. But now you're doing the process of IVF to the, the woman and... Uh, does the person need to repeat 
after every cycle. You know, you have a baby now after it is being done, and then you need to have another baby, you're still finding problem, you have to come back. Or is it that once, once you do it, it, give, it triggers something in the, in, the, in the system of the person that gives room for pregnancy? That's later. a very good question, because uh, I cannot count how many patients have a second baby spontaneously after doing one or two or three cycles of IVF. So it's not true. So it's not once you do IVF, it's always IVF. That's not true at all. And we have many, many examples of women that struggle to have their first child, and then right after, they will, uh, they will have spontaneous pregnancy, not even one, maybe one or two. And in my opinion, the most common here, the most affecting effect is psychology. Because the woman now, she knows that she can have a baby, so psychologically, she is prepared and she's more relaxed. And that's why uh, she will have her second baby. So, so psychology, psychology is, is very important. Really? If, if you want to look into statistics, you can see that a lot of women have, are pregnant just during vacation when they are not thinking about having a baby. Mm -hmm. So when you do an intercourse, not in the aim to have a baby, it's uh, there where you have your pregnancy. Oh, I see. So how do you prepare these patients psychologically, you know, after the IVF to, to be more uh, confident in themselves that they can have a baby? Do you do anything on psychology specifically for them? Yes, but I will just correct a little bit. Maybe in pre-IVF, it will be better to do some psychological consultation. So to prepare her psychologically for this journey that could be in some women difficult, so you should uh, be prepare her psychologically. How do I prepare her? First, I sit with her and a lot of time, I take a lot of time as the first visit to explain everything. And then there is a psychologist, you know, that can support the woman during this journey. Pre-IVF and post-IVF and even postpartum. So it's when the patient uh, delivers the baby. You know, sometimes you have postpartum blues and postpartum depression, and psychology here play a major role, a key role. But, but is it really a thing, or you just look at the patients and, patients and see who needs psychology? I mean, every, every infertile patient. couple needs a psychologist. Oh, okay. That's my opinion. Walk us through the processes of IVF from beginning to at the end. So as uh, the first visit, we, uh, I insist always to see the couple, not just the woman, so the male and the female. I insist to see them in the first visit, both of them. So they, when I explain, uh, they know exactly what uh, they are going through. And uh, first step, I'll do an ultrasound for the woman to see her ovarian reserve. What is ovarian reserve is the quantity of eggs that she has inside both ovaries. And this can be done by ultrasound. And also we have a blood test that should be done, a hormonal test, to see if there's any hormonal imbalance that can affect the pregnancy rate after. So this is for, for the woman. Also we can do like a hysterosalpancography to see if her tubes are patent. So it's not necessary to go directly into IVF. There's another procedure called IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, which is, uh, which is a very simple compared to IVF. And if the tubes are patent, the sperm is good, and the woman has a good ovarian reserve, sometimes we can do IUI and not to go directly into IVF. And also it's less expensive. So that's concerning the woman. And uh, for the male, we always ask for a sperm analysis and a sperm culture to see the sperm quality and the sperm concentration and the normal percentage of normal form of the sperm. And according to all those results, I will decide if I go into IUI or IVF. Mm. Okay, um, so the rate of success, is it depending on on the age of the patient? Not only the age, but, but age is a major, major factor. Why the is One that? of the major factors, because age is related directly to the quantity and quality of the egg. Uh, and, and, and every woman you know that after the age of 37, 38, her ovarian reserve will decrease, and also her quality. And so after the age of 40, 41, we start to have less eggs and 
uh, less quality. Okay. And that's statistics. There's this thing I've observed, maybe I'm wrong, but people who undertake this uh, IVF process or procedure uh, seem to have more multiple babies than single births. Yes. Is that a thing? Do you yes. choose it or it just comes? No. That was in the past, before uh, having the freezing. Now we have uh, embryo freezing, so we can do single embryo transfer or a double embryo transfer, so the maximum you can have twins or a single baby. And, but in the, first, in the past, we didn't have freezing, so what we get from the IVF, so if you get four or five embryo, we, we used to return those four and five embryo, and that's why you have a higher risk of having a multiple, multiple pregnancies. But nowadays, we have the freezing, and uh, we should not uh, return more than two embryo in the worst case scenario. Uh, what if it's the choice of the person, the patient? What if she wants? Yeah. I cannot tell her no. Okay. It's, it's her right. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, a lot of people want this procedure, but the thing is too expensive. Is that a, is that a right uh, perception of what it should be? It is expensive, yes, but it's not too expensive. Okay. What is expensive also, don't forget, if you want to use the right medication, the good ones, that's the most expensive part, the injections. But it's not too expensive. So it's not that much. But now if you are considering going abroad and doing the IVF in Europe maybe, versus doing it here, so no ticket, no hotel, so maybe it will be less expensive. Okay, what are, the, what, are, what are the contributions of the person who, who undergoes this procedure? Because you will do the injecting, you will do the sorting of the eggs, you will do everything clinical to make sure that the person gets pregnant. But when that person gets home, there must be some things that they need to do for themselves. What are these critical things? Yes, the most critical thing is lifestyle modification. So by lifestyle, I mean diet and stress, and that's psychology. So psychology, stress, anxiety, lifestyle modification, obesity, how uh, diet and exercise, all of these can affect pregnancy and can affect also the pregnancy rate after an IVF. So I would say lifestyle modification. As, so lifestyle uh, affects as, uh, it. Uh, yes. Does lifestyle affect after you have done it or both. Uh, it affects them? Even lifestyle also can make you not to get pregnant. Yes, both. What kind of lifestyle? I mean, if you are eating a lot of carbs and sugar, so it will lead to increased weight. Increased weight will lead to less response to the injections that we have. Less response, it will lead to less eggs. No, no, no. no. Even before the injections, like someone comes to you and he needs or she need help, needs help. Yeah. He or she needs help. Yes. Um, but was, is there a possibility that if that person had a different kind of lifestyle, he or she may not have needed you. Yes, I, we are talking about spontaneous pregnancy here. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to increase the spontaneous pregnancy and not doing IVF, yeah. that's what you mean. Yes. So yes, uh, once again, lifestyle modification because obesity or increased weight, increased carbs intake can affect the ovulation and the quality of the egg. So when we have decrease in weight, decrease in carbs and decrease in every sugar intake, and exercise, it will increase the quality of the egg and will have more regular cycle. And so the woman can get a spontaneous pregnancy. And uh, in particular, we are talking now about polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is uh, very common here also in Nigeria. So PCOS patients uh, especially need a lot of lifestyle modification in order for them to have a spontaneous pregnancy. And yes, they don't need IVF all the time. You are, you are right. So lifestyle can affect spontaneous pregnancy without talking about infertility. IVF. Yeah, well, but, but when you, when you mention carbs, it's, uh, it's very scary to a Nigerian. Our food is yeah, mostly I know. carbs. I know, <laughs> so I know. that's you say, true. So that's if, true. if you say carb, carbs uh, will, will, will affect pregnancy, it would be Not like affect pregnancy. Low, low excessive carbs can affect weight, and weight can affect the egg quality and it can affect fertility. Okay, so if you eat the carbs and you can still stay fit, yes, you're you're good. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> fine. So low carbs. I don't. I don't. I don't I'm. I'm not gonna say zero carbs. I'm saying low carbs. Exercise, mm -hmm. or you can eat carbs and exercise, so you can Go make like calories, a balance. Yeah.
Okay. So, so t tell us about the technology involved in IVF now. It, like you said, it's, it used to be different, a little bit different from what it is now. How, is it easier now? Is it better now? Is, is it less expensive now than before? What are the things that are involved? Yes, sure. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, technologies that uh, we are using even here in Nigeria. It's like I talked before about freezing. So that's a new technique. Uh, uh, aside from freezing, we have uh, uh, a new uh, technology called PGD, where we go and do a biopsy on the embryo. And we can see the DNA of this embryo before implanting this embryo inside the uterus. And by this, we are like selecting normal embryo. And if there's any genetic abnormality, it can be detected before transferring this embryo to the uterus. So by this, we are when we are transferring a normal embryo, we are increasing the pregnancy rate. That's true. And we are decreasing the abortion after if there is any risk of abortion after the woman is pregnant because of any genetic abnormality. So we are decreasing this risk. So the number of, or if you want the percentage of take-home baby, which is different from a pregnancy rate, is higher due to the PGD, which is very new. Okay. But the medical field now has remote uh, remedies to a lot of things. Uh, you can stay in, uh, in America and, and do a surgery or something, you know. Does that also work for no. IVF? No, because you need to retrieve the eggs. You need the eggs Contact and the sperm. Contact spots. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it sure. Has to do. Okay. Well, maybe you have a word for the people who... Um, maybe I'd, Okay, before we get there, how can the people in the rural areas, for instance, access this? Well, uh, you need, yes, of course, you need some, uh, some financial uh, help, of course. And we need more centers, maybe close, uh, close to, every, uh, to every, every area, not just maybe in the cities or in the big centers. So we need maybe more centers. We need more awareness, and uh, we need to talk more to people to tell them when to seek help and not when it is too late. And that's my message today. Yeah, but, but, but how will you assess the number of IVF centers uh, with the people who need these IVF centers, it's, even in the cities? Do you think it's enough, or do you think it's something government has to look at very deliberately? Do you think there's something of policy or something? Yes, maybe. I don't know uh, much more about uh, politics here. I'm just talking medicine. So yes, of course, you need more uh, centers, of course. You have yeah, to, I'm to just 20 talking million or your, 20 your experience in the number of uh, cases that you get per week or per month uh, will give you an idea whether uh, the centers are not much, are not enough for the people to access. For sure, it's not enough. Really? We need more. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, infertile couples here. Mm. If you were to advise the government on things to do in the health sector to make it better, what would you say? Maybe more hospitals more hospital, more awareness, and uh, not to, to push people also to go away or doctors away from Nigeria to work outside, so keep them here so they can increase the, the health system. Okay, let's just access um, free consultation, talk to the people uh, about IVF, about what they need to do, about the, what they need to know in the short space of time that we have right now. Just talk to Nigerians. You just said there are very many infertile couples. Yeah. Here. And sometimes it's not really something that is beyond repair. It's, some, it's not something that is beyond uh, remedy, let me use that word. So please, by way of advice to yeah. Nigerians. So my advice today is not to wait more than one year of uh, one unprotected regular intercourse. Please, don't wait more than that. Uh, because we are seeing a lot of patients uh, coming to us after 10 and 15 years of infertility. So please, 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 don't wait more than one year. Please seek help before. So after one year, exactly, go see a specialist, and uh, it will be fine. Because as I, I told you, age is a very important factor. So don't wait until the age of 45 and 46 to go and seek help for the first time. 
but and you can still have help. Yes, even at that age. but also after the age of 41 and 42, we have many technologies, including ovarian rejuvenation, which is another chapter, which is ovarian PRP that can generate more eggs and better quality in your ovaries, so you can have a baby even at the age of 45. But I'm just telling a general info, mm. so yeah. seek help after one year of unprotected intercourse. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Jean uh, Nassar, uh, for coming on the show. Thank you. It's been very enlightening, and we do hope that uh, people will access this information, and not only the information, will also go to the hospitals and get IVF. And possibly there are some stigmas, so possibly there are some, uh, uh, some traditional beliefs against that, and you did say something about enlightenment. We will take it up from there. When they come to the hospitals, you do your bit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on the Thank show. You. Thank well, you. Well, uh, that's how we're going to wrap it up on the show this morning. We've had the pleasure of having Dr. Jean Nassar here. He's a fertility expert, and if you're seeking to have a baby and you think you're having a problem, try IVF. That just might be your solution. And um, on behalf of the entire Breakfast family on Plus TV Africa, I'd like to say thank you uh, to you for being a part of the program. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamu. I'm Gaiji.